welcome back to Porphyrin Bootcamp. Today we'll be showing you how to carry out the mononitration of tetraphenyl porphyrin using sodium nitrite. For this you will need an ice bath, a stirrer hot plate, a 100ml round bottom flask, a beaker of water, TPP, sodium nitrite and trifluoroacetic acid. Weigh out your TPP. In this reaction it's particularly important that all reagents are weighed out accurately. Dissolve your porphyrin in approximately 10ml of trifluoroacetic acid. Place your stirring mixture into an ice bath, allowing it to cool for approximately 10 minutes until it reaches zero degrees. Once your reaction mixture has completely cooled, add your carefully weighed out sodium nitrite to the reaction mixture and immediately remove it from the ice bath. This will need to then stir for exactly four minutes. After four minutes, immediately transfer your reaction mixture into a beaker of water. Wash the reaction flask with both water and dichloromethane to ensure complete transfer of your product. Add a stirrer bar to the beaker of your product and put it onto the stirrer hot plate to begin stirring. Begin adding sodium carbonate. Do this slowly as the reaction can be vigorous. The neutralisation is complete when the colour of the reaction mixture has turned from green to purple and there is a small residual amount of sodium carbonate in the reaction flask. Carefully pour your reaction mixture into a separating funnel, ready for the aqueous extraction. Extract the product from the reaction mixture using several portions of dichloromethane. As the solvent you're using is chlorinated, this layer will sink below the aqueous layer and will be the bottom, darkly coloured layer in the separating funnel. Extract the aqueous layer with dichloromethane until all of the product is removed and the aqueous layer is clear or pale. Add magnesium sulphate to the organic layer and stir until no water remains in the solvent. A good test of whether it is dry or not is when you stir it, the magnesium sulphate will remain as a floating white powder in the solution, kind of like a snow globe. Remove the magnesium sulphate from your reaction mixture using vacuum filtration. You may need to wash the magnesium sulphate with several portions of dichloromethane to ensure that all of your product is transferred from the magnesium sulphate to the button flask below. Analysis of the crude product by TLC can be used to judge whether the reaction was successful. Following this, the solvent can be removed under reduced pressure and the crude can be purified by column chromatography, which we will show you next time. <laughs> 